Hello and welcome. Today we've got Tom and we have Bryce and we'll be speaking the lost books of the Bible. Now, just before we begin, you can subscribe to our Telegram channels and to nicholasveniarmin.com for my free email updates. And if you're watching this for the first time on YouTube, I will leave the link below in the description for the full interview. Tom and Bryce, thank you for joining me. Tom, we'll go with you first. How are you? Hey, Nick. How are you, buddy? Hey, Bryce. Good to see hey. you both, guys. Um, yeah, so it's been an interesting um, an interesting few weeks. And uh, I know you've mentioned this before, but something that President Trump said uh, at the weekend that did stood out to me, and I did a little mini video on it, was he's making it really obvious for people that... And uh, he repeated a, basically the phrase that he doesn't think it's him. And uh, he actually said it with real emphasis at the end of one of his little mini pieces on it and he says i don't think it's him you know really clearly and i did the numbers on that and it comes to 202 which comes to the ripple effect oh it's the ripple effect which i've spoken about before and it comes to also um 30, 000, and that was the sacred number that he spoke about many many months ago last year actually when the stock market was high um and so he's coding his messages but he's also telling us I don't know, one, maybe we're going to see someone like Jim Carrey pop up. Who knows? You know, there might be a Scooby-Doo ending because they need to shock the world and, and show that it's not him. And then obviously Trump will be like, well, that's another thing that Trump got correct because everything he says comes to pass. <laughs> he's laying the foundation to show that it's not him, it's not Biden, you know, and he's telling people clearly now that that's the case. So I thought that was interesting. And I thought the numbers on it, it's the ripple effect, which is... 30,000 reference to the stock market is all very kind of funneling into a focal point. So I thought that was interesting. Very interesting. We have to read in between the lines of what President Trump says, because like, you know, it's, it's no coincidence. You know, he's definitely saying something and um, and usually there's a lot more to what he's saying. And I was saying yesterday on my webinar that um, when Donald Trump says that he's going to take back the house, um, and he's, you know, dwelling and talking and sorting out the election. Um, that, that he knows that he there is definitely light under the tunnel at the end of the tunnel. Sorry. Um, he knows he's going to take back the house. He's not when he says, I think it means he knows he's going to. Um, mm. When he says, I think it, he's humbly letting people know and planting the seed in their brain that this could, this is going to be happening in the future. So get prepared and that's what it is it's a preparation and uh, i think it's uh, a military communication to the people so bryce how are you and and um, what's been happening with you well we're just we're just living the life here in atlanta georgia it's extremely extremely hot here and i keep thinking about that uh the book the great gatsby um and it, when everything came to a pivotal point in that book we're at the precipice of of, an, of a change it was in the heat of summer and so we are definitely living in that heat thick heat of summer right now and it's so exciting i know we've been waiting for this for a really long time but it's so exciting um that that i i know our friend janine released a video a couple of days ago on the, the military guy that said basically this is it get prepared get your house prepared and and that can be scary but but don't be scared we've been re we've been waiting for this and this is our time to shine to help our fellow man too who who isn't prepared you know it's a time for us to hold the line and step up and really be loving people um the people of the light so with that being said do you guys want to talk about how we got where we got with like hardly any of the bible in our actual bible <laughs> you know what I, it's a, it, the bible is a topic where I'm very interested in it. Okay. And a lot of people are, and we shouldn't be ashamed of, you know, questioning them, no. you know, because we, 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 we shouldn't be in love with the indoctrination and just stick with what we've been told. We should be in love with the truth. Absolutely. And, and, and when we're in love with the truth, we're always asking questions. Now, one of the questions that I had was, Mary Magdalene has a gospel. Mm -hmm. Why isn't it in the Bible? Now, Bryce, my friend, who's a Christian, he's a Pentecostal. He says to me, well, it wasn't Christ centered. They didn't put it in the Bible because it wasn't Christ centered. And I said to him, right, well, 
Personally, I think that Mary Magdalene's gospel would be very Christ-centered, first of all, and it's just a coincidence that she's a female, so they've told us it's not Christ-centered. But on the other hand, let's, I said to him, let's just argument, let's just say, for argument's sake, that you're right, and that it's not Christ-centered. Okay, so they left it out of the Bible. Well, why isn't it general knowledge? Why isn't it out there? Why didn't they tell us? You know, well, this wasn't Christ-centered, but here it is. And you can download it on the app store like you can with the Bible. Why isn't it available? How about the, go the Q gospel? How about the gospel of Philip? There is just so, so much. Many. And how, where are the missing books of the Bible um, of Jesus's life from 13 to 30, which is the number 17, by the way, if you add them together, where is the missing books of that? What was he really doing? And if it's not Christ-centered or not relevant to the Bible, then why isn't it general knowledge? Why isn't it that when I ask a very Christian person about Jesus's life from the 13 to 30, nobody has a, a clue about what he was doing. Like we know what happened when he was 30 to 33. I so, know what he was doing because I've read some of these books. Right. So right. we've got these questions. So as a Christian person, in fact, I will say this. As a person who loves the truth and whatever the truth is, I want the truth. I want to, uh, I'm in love with the truth, mm -hmm. uh, with the truth. Whatever the truth is, I want to follow that. Okay. But I'm not going to accept something that's got missing knowledge and nobody knows the answers to. And we're just going to accept the narrative that, oh, it wasn't important. So we didn't put it in the Bible. That's not good enough for me. No, it's and it's not, not good enough for a lot of viewers. OK, now this is not mocking the Bible and no. this is not mocking Jesus. I love Jesus and I love God. But when it's given to us in paper, black and white material, I question the deep state. They've yeah. lied to us about everything. OK, well, why haven't they lied? Of course, they're going to be lying to us about this as well. It's no coincidence that they would just leave the book out and, you know, it's perfectly intact. I mean, it wouldn't be floating on the app store, would it? No. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Well, no. this, this is a very, this is a, you know, people who have nothing to hide, hide nothing. So you're right. If they weren't trying to hide something, they would have made all of these. There are supposed to be 777 books in our Bible. We only got about 60 of them. And I say about because some denominations have more than others. That's a lot of information that's missing. Now, with that being said, before people ask, the Vatican has not released. The Vatican has all these books down in their library, and they have not released them. The 45-ish books that we do have were found in excavations in Egypt and in the Middle East. All right? So people like us, in, back in the fourth century when they became illegal, hid them in tombs because they knew the truth. They, they saw what was happening with Constantine and the Council of Nicaea. Now, the devil, Satan, Lucifer is many, many, many things. Stupid ain't one of them. All right. We know that this group of people, what do they do? They infiltrate. They infiltrate and they invert. So in order for us to, and I'm going to go, I'm going to stamp, this is going to be very much a very Cliff Notes version of what happened on my channel, Esoteric Atlanta. If you go to my playlist, the Dark Outpost playlist, I have a bunch, we've, we've read Mary, we've read Philip, we've read Thomas. I have a bunch of the read-throughs of all these books that we have. And I also have a history on Constantine. So if you want to know more information, you can look at that. So when Jesus died, when Jesus was executed, which, which is what happened, he was crucified, he was executed. All of his disciples, his apostles, then had a warrant out for their arrest. They were going to take them down too. Why? Because Jesus pushed back against the, um, the rabbis and the state at that time. He was like one of us. He was pushing back against what they were teaching and the control. There's a lot of similarities to what was happening to us now that was happening back then. The Romans coming in, the Greeks coming in, all this kind of stuff. And of course, the control of the temples with the rabbis. So all of these apostles that we know, we know there were 12, but there were also way many more women who were also granted the, the permission to go and spread this as well. Mary Magdalene, Mary of Bethany, who was Philip's wife, which I'll talk about, a bunch of them. So when, the, when Jesus died, all of these apostles basically had to skedaddle. They could not stay in the area. There was warrants out for their arrest. They had to run. They were fugitives. So most of the apostles 
Some could write, some could not write, some could read, some could not read, but they were all very well educated in like the temple. So when they left the Middle East, some uh, Mary went to France, we know Mark went to Egypt, we know Thomas went to India, Philip went to Turkey, they went everywhere and they started teaching this new faith. I'm not going to call it a religion because religion means the worship of many legions or the worship of many satanic gods. All right. That's where the word goes. So it's a faith. Jesus was teaching freedom. He and the Gnostic Gospels, which Mary, Thomas, some of these Gospels were all Gnostic, taught you. If you read them, there's not a whole lot of story to it. There's no begin. It's just these teachings that Jesus gave. Thomas is all full of just Jesus's teaching. Thomas Didymus, you know, he was Greek. A lot of these guys were had Greek blood in them. That's where you see their names. Philip had Greek blood. They were translators with the Greek language. So there's more to these guys' stories and these women's stories than we're actually even told. They were like us. Right. And they had I mean, they were looking over their shoulder the whole time. So they were teaching people through Jesus's teaching that they now are free. Your body, your natural life isn't your eternal life, your soul. You don't have to go to a preacher. You don't have to go to the state. You don't have to go to anybody else to have that relationship with divinity. That was the basis of Jesus's teaching. That's still the basis is through Jesus's blood. We are saved through Jesus's blood. We can have a one on one relationship with God. We have nothing to fear right? Death is just a passage into a new beginning, right? So Jesus taught all this. Well, this was very scary for the powers that be. We know this, these Canaanite cabals have been around for forever. So for the next couple of hundreds of years, you have these disciples out there teaching their students and their students are teaching their students. Well, when they left the Middle East, obviously they did not have the New Testament that was created afterwards. Most of the New Testament is letters written by Paul and Paul never knew Jesus in life. He had an experience with Jesus after Jesus died. And then we have the four gospels at the beginning, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. There are many more gospels, guys. So these people, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, we'll just take them as an example, did not write their gospels. Their students and their students of their students wrote their gospels. Now, these schools that existed, we'll call them schools, after Jesus died, before the Council of Nicaea, um, they were not really in communication with each other. It would take a long time to communicate. But if you look through Matthew, especially the first three, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you see identical passages in there. They're identical. How is that possible since they did not communicate with each other? Well, it's possible because they had two gospels with them when they fled the Middle East that were their hard copies. This was the book of Q. Yes, that's correct. You heard me right. I shit you not. The book of Q and the gospel of the Holy Twelve. The gospel of the Holy Twelve, we do have a full intact version of that that was found in Tibet in the late 19th century. And if you go to the nazarenewaycom you can read the whole English translation. It goes through, I, I sobbed throughout that book. It is so touching. It gives so much detail to Jesus's life. It talks about his parents, his birth, his cousins, his siblings. He had two wives. He married his first wife at 18. She died when she was 27. And then he married Mary Magdalene. She was his wife. He had children. A lot of these children were kept hidden because he was such a dangerous person. They wanted to keep the children hidden. Um, so it goes through everything. 13 to 30, he was studied. First, he went to study down in Egypt. Then he went into India and studied all these spiritual with these different talking to these different untrained. You know, he's the son of God. He's listening to all these other people. And then he's kind of bringing people together under this one teaching of freedom. All right. Um, he talks about reincarnation, that we do live many lives before we finally reach the end of our, our lifespan. Um, he, he, he encourages women to go teach. There's a scene in the gospel of the Holy 12 where he's preaching and teaching and there's a woman listening to him teach and they get mad at the woman and tell her she needs to go to the kitchen and make Jesus some food. And Jesus stops him and says, no, she needs to sit here and listen to her soul is valuable, just as valuable as well. Um, we also have a lot missing from the old Testament, uh, the book of Jubilee. Uh, which we just finished. We're right now reading, reading the apocalypse of Abraham, which goes way into detail over what they do in these ceremonies, these Canaanites, right? So in the fourth century, we have this figure called Constantine. Everybody's heard of Constantine. Uh, Constantine the Great. He was really Constantine the con man. All right. He before he took over the Roman Empire, the Roman Empire was divided into four sections. It was a republic. 
right? And he decided when his father died in the early fourth century, his, his father died in York, England, that Constantine wanted his own little new world order. He wanted to be the man. All right. Constantine practiced a faith called Mithraism. Mithraism looks very much like our Christian faith, faith today, and it's based in pagan and satanic uh, holidays. I'll just leave it at that. And we know that. We know that our Christmas celebration, our Easter are not actually, they kind of been tied up with Christian ideas, but they're actually really not Christian ideas. Um, anyway, so at this point, Constantine, there were, Christianity was a fledgling faith that was moving throughout ro the Roman Empire at this time. And a lot of the lower class men and women, but mostly men, because we're talking about soldiers, had adapted to this new faith because they were now free. They didn't have to worry about the change that, that, that bound them in poverty in this life. They knew they were going to have eternal life in the next life. Now, at this point, Christianity was illegal. You could be executed for practicing Christianity. You remember the story of the Colosseums where they would put Christians in the Colosseum to be devoured by lions. It was sport for the Romans. Well, Constantine decides that he's going to pass an edict that Christianity is, not, is now not illegal. He's doing this because he needs men to fight for him. It's a manipulation. Now, the person that stood up against Constantine was the guy that governed the side, the kind of the Central Europe side today up into Rome, and that was Maxis Sentius. Now, Maxis Sentius would be in reality like our Mr. T, Trump today. Uh, history books will tell you he was terrible, he was awful, and that Constantine was wonderful and great, but it's all an inversion. He had already, already accepted the Christian faith into his region. He'd already, he's just kind of like live and let live. You know, if you like this faith, you do you boo. Like if that's cool, this weird new Christian faith, you do it. Well, Constantine, Maximensius went up against Constantine because he did not want, he knew what Constantine was going to do. He was going to take over this, this land and he was going to be the emperor and control everything. Constantine ended up killing Maxicentius at this battle in Italy where like many years later, Constantine claims he saw a vision of God. That's not true. That's complete BS. Constantine, Constantine tells on himself and his artifactual remains. That never happened. That was all a lie. So when he kills Max Ascentius, he now is the ruler of, the, of this new world, this new world order. At this point in 325 uh, AD, he has what's called the Council of Nicaea. So he decides now Christianity should have never been a dogmatic religion. There should have never been rules. There should have never been a pope. And in fact, having a pope goes against everything Jesus taught. Nobody is higher than anybody else in the eyes of God. We are all, that's what Jesus taught. We're all equally children of God. We're children yeah. of the light. And so Constantine has this council. Well, he, call, he calls all these bishops into this council to now put together a dogma, a Bible. So what they do is they go through all of these 770, 77 books and they throw out all the books. They, lab they label them as heresy that counter the narrative that they now want to spin. And with the 60-ish books they keep, they edit. So the Bible you have has been edited. And you can look through some of these missing books and see exactly where edits have happened. For example, I know people are going to get upset about this. A virgin birth is a satanic thing. The satanic religions talk of a virgin birth with Horus, with Ra, with all these other deities. In the gospel of the Holy 12, it is very clear. The angel goes to Joseph and tells Joseph to go visit his wife. And they get pregnant, which to me doesn't change my opinion at all on Jesus. Jesus was man and was God. He was the same. So of he, could, he could have a, a biological human father like Joseph and a biological mother and still be in spirit, the son of God. Yeah. I think I've passed it. I think myself and the viewers mm -hmm. and many people who are awake now, we've passed that point where we're, get, you know, getting upset. Right. We want to know. We just want to know the truth. We're cool about right. getting upset because we know we've been lied to about everything. Right. It's, it'll be foolish to think that, the Bible is a hundred percent perfect and we should follow it by the, by the thing. If it was the truth, it wouldn't be in the app store. I mean, I can't even talk about, right. you know, and keep it on YouTube, let alone the Bible, right. the truth about who we are. And they're trying to, you know, so. Yeah. Well, our so, you know, sorry, yeah. no, no, please. Well, I was going to say, I, I look at a lot of the archaeologists. Archaeologists are my favorite people because they don't really give a crap about what the narrative is. They just want to find the truth. And so if you follow a lot of archaeologists, 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 archaeologists who dig a narcissistic psychopath, 
You know, he had his, let me tell you a little something about Constantine. He had his son executed and his second wife executed because he heard a rumor that they were having an affair, a rumor that turned out to not to be true. If you have the love of Jesus in your heart, is that a behavior you would have? No, he was a psychopath Canaanite Satanist. In the Council of Nicaea, all these bishops were now subservient to Constantine because he was the one power. So if a bishop were to like try to push back against what Constantine wanted, Constantine could have that bishop executed. He could also pull money from that bishop. So they all had to agree, okay, 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 we're going to do this. And then after this canonized Bible was put together, they told people, the Christians of that day, if you have any of these books that we have now labeled as heresy in your possession, we will, you will be executed. It's a death penalty. And so all of these Christians at this time knew, they knew where this was going. They knew this was going to be censored. They were like us. So what did they do? They took what they had and they buried it in tombs down in Egypt in the Middle East, hoping, hoping that one day we would find them, which we did starting in the late 19th century through the 20th century. A lot of like the Book of Mary, we're missing chunks of the Book of Mary because the papyrus was rotted away. We're missing some of Thomas. My favorite, one of my favorite books so far, besides the Gospel of the Holy Twelve, is the Acts of Philip because of his wife. Philip's wife was uh, Mary of Bethany or Miriam of Bethany. It's the same interchangeable name. And she was sassy and saucy. Let me tell you guys. She was a force to be reckoned with. And the whole Acts of Philip talks about her, him and Mary, his wife, Mary, because again, they were all named Mary, in uh, what is modern day Turkey teaching. And she was literally, Philip was very shy. She was literally the one pulling people in, giving them the show. She was, she talked back, you know, so you see these female figures, especially in the missing, in the book of Jubilee, in the Old Testament, you see all of these wives that are saucy and sassy as well. And talking back to, you know, having a voice. And at this point, we're coming into a very patriarchal place with the Roman empire as well. Um, and so, it, you know, it, again, if people have nothing to hide, hide nothing. And in my, in my own faith, in my own belief in God and, and where I've been reading and going through all of these missing books, again, that we have, that we have access to has strengthened my faith in God has strengthened it. And somebody commented on one of my um, videos and I loved it. I, I wish I could remember who commented so I can give that person credit. There is a difference between Christianity and churchianity. You can go to church every day of your life and have no, no, relation, no relationship with God whatsoever. You could never set foot in a church and have a very devout and powerful relationship with God. And that's the basis of the Christian faith is that we all have that in us. We all have that light in us. We are children of a living God, right? And they want to take that away from us. Now, it's funny. There is a prophecy somewhere. I think it was with the Cathars, which was Mary's line in France, that um, at the end of days, so the end of this timeline that we're in, which we're in right now, we believe we're in Revelation, we're flipping to the new timeline, that all of these missing books that have been censored had been fact-checked. The Bible basically got fact-checked by the Council of Nicaea, um, would start to come up. We would start to find them, and we have been finding them. So anyway, I would really highly suggest if you guys go to the nazarenewaycom They're a great website. They have a lot of great papers on some of these missing books and what had happened at the Council of Nicaea. Um, you can also just Google some of these missing books and you can find PDFs of them. You can find many people talking about them who aren't even my, my the best. My best advice is to always go to somebody if you're going to listen to a commentary who isn't necessarily a Christian because they're going to give you an unbiased viewpoint and you're going to get closer to the truth that way. Right. If, if it's somebody that shares your faith you're going to have confirmation bias, but without that, you're going to get a clearer view. And that's what I've done. Even though my faith is that of, the, of Christian origins, it's not, I, I like to hear people with their, their truth. As you say, they're looking at the truth of what the stuff is telling us. So anyway, that's basically in a nutshell, what had happened and that, and we know we, I'm sorry for the, I know the Catholic people are beautiful, beautiful people, but we know that the Catholic church is it's Canaanite, it's cabal. Uh, the Protestant churches are the same thing. Um, I'm, I'm sure, Tom, you know, the Mormon church has become corrupt as well. They've all been corrupted by, by this power. And it's up to us now to reclaim our freedom back, you know? So, and we, anyway. and we, will. we will. Yeah. We're beautiful because we're victims, you know, um, mm -hmm. of the deep state and lies. And we want to find the truth. Now, the other thing I wanted to ask you was, you say that Jesus was studying from the time he was 13 to 30, okay? 
So some may, my, you know, my dad would say, yeah, but he's a son of God. He knew everything. He was God. Why would he need to study? So what's he your answer to that? He was also man. He was both man and God. And how are you going? So God, if we look at like, we look at the Apocryphon of John, that's another missing book. That's very beautiful. And we, we study this in yoga. I'm a, we go to India a lot. We own a yoga shala, like the idea of God, you know, the idea of, of, of it's not, God is not human. God is something that's so much bigger than we, we can't assign human opinions to something that is a, above human origins, right? God is self-generating. God is not mortal. And so in order for God to reach us, human beings, he had to come into a human body, but that human body still had a human brain. And so in order for Jesus to bring people together, right, he had to go out and study all these different faiths study these different walks of life from his human brain in order to then take the knowledge of the spirit and bring it together. It's not a bad thing. It doesn't weaken the knowledge of God. It actually, in my opinion, makes our God even greater that he would take that time to go and understand all people. Remember, especially in the gospel of the Holy 12, you see Jesus telling his apostles over and over and over again, that the Israelites, the children of God, the light, the children of God, weren't just people of Jewish descent. That shocked them. They couldn't believe the Gentiles were also going to be his children. Who are Gentiles? Gentiles are anybody, any human being that is not Jewish. I'm a Gentile. I believe you two are Gentiles, right? He was telling these guys who had been so bombarded with the Romans, with the Greeks, had this visceral hatred for these people that had conquered their land, that not all human beings are prisoner to the body they were born into, that the Israelites would also be a part of this, that the Gentiles would also come in. And so he's trying to bring people together. No more division. We are all one people. We are all humanity. We are all and on this earth together, you know? Mm -hmm. And of course, I mean, even today, look what they're, look what the deep state's trying to do today. They're trying to divide, still divide us. Right. And so Jesus was revolutionary like that. He, he was like, no, no, these blonde haired blue eyed people are just as worthy as the Jewish people. These Egyptian people are just as worthy. They're all children of God. And so, and so again, for him to coming from a Jewish background, which it was prophesied that the son of God would come through this line, he then had to go and bring people together and understand how do you bring someone to you? You, you do it through understanding, compassion, empathy. You don't go to someone and be like, you're wrong. You're wrong. No, you, you come with love. I understand where you're coming from. I understand how you've been raised. Let's talk about it. Let's bring people together. That's what Jesus was doing. And the church has done a really good job to divide us again. So, um, yeah. So, you know, and I think once it's all over, we're going to have to regroup. And I know I talked to Melissa Redpill about this and a third Testament is going to have to be written, you know, because, because we are moving into a new time where all this stuff is going to be revealed. And I think, I definitely think Jesus is on our side and very They say that Jesus wrote a book. There's a, a book out there that Jesus apparently wrote. We don't have it. We don't know. Cause yeah, we don't so have that, That's a very good point. That's a very, very good point. H how is it that Jesus, we were told that there's no gospels from Jesus or anything from Jesus or anything in writing. And they, they, they want to play Jesus off. Like he grew up really poor. And, um, our, the archeological archeologists that I follow said, that's not necessarily true. He was a carpenter, but a carpenter can also be translated into architect. And so Jesus would have come from like a middle-class family where he, he wasn't as poor as they want to want to portray him to be. So with that being said, even though that doesn't matter as far as your salvation, he would probably have known how to read and write. Um, Mary Magdalene came from a very wealthy family, very, very wealthy fishing family. Think about like the tycoons, like the fishing tag that, you know, she was from one of those families. And so for a woman at that time, she was also very, very well educated. She could read and write. Her gospel was most likely written by her. So, um, so yeah, but some of the others couldn't, so their students wrote it, you know? Um, so yeah, of course, you know, their families wanted them to understand. And I think Mary and Joseph, obviously they knew Joseph and Mary were visited by the angel, according to the gospel of the Holy Twelve, and both told. And so they knew that Jesus was, was not going to follow the same path that his siblings. And yes, Jesus did have siblings. He did have brothers and sisters born after him. Um, one of his brothers took over the temple in Jerusalem after Jesus was executed and he lost his life. All the apostles for the most part lost their, their lives in pretty gruesome ways. But, um, but um, 
Yeah. So the, what we're looking at, what happened at the beginning of the, we're basically living the same life in a modern time that those apostles lived back then, except right. for our it's going to be different because we're coming at, and I, and I think, and I, Tom and I've talked about this a lot, that some of those disciples and apostles are back today on the earth. I think right. Interesting. Back. So, so, you know, when we say Jesus came to, you know, to show us how, you know, to set an example on how we should live, you know, and, you know, for example, he, he was baptized by St. John the Baptist. I don't know what your thoughts is on baptism. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, no, absolutely. Uh, John, the gospel of the Holy, John, John the Baptist and Jesus, they, they both had to be, they both had to exist at the same time. And John says that, that he had to, they were cousins, right? So they were cousins. Um, and and it, the gospel of the Holy 12 speaks of, of John the Baptist conception too, and that he came first. He had to kind of like, he was like the, um, you know, if you go to see a concert, he was the opening act, right? And he was the opening act. And the reason why these revolutionary ideas were able to flourish at this time with John the Baptist, Jesus, there were a few others as well, is because, was because of the extreme, um, the extreme control that was coming from the Roman Empire, the locking down of people, basically what we're experiencing now, but in different times. So they were attracted to these rebel. I mean, if you think about, like, if you look at Trump, when Trump has a rally, how many people are there? How many people follow him, follow him around for his rallies? I will tell you, my eight-year-old nephew, when I was eight years old, I didn't care about politics. That, that was boring. Most, most kids don't like politics, but my eight-year-old nephew went to one of Trump's rallies and he was mesmerized and watched the whole time. There's a magic there, right? Same thing with Jesus. When Jesus toured around, he had a, he had a, he had a, a rally, all rallies everywhere. Hundreds and hundreds of people listening to him speak about this freedom, right? He also, something in the gospel, the Holy 12 people might have a problem with, and I don't shoot the messenger. Jesus tells us if we're following this faith that we are to be vegetarian. He speak, he says the animals uh, breathe, this, do, do the animals not breathe the same breath we breathe? That they are your brothers and sisters, that they too were created by God, that God knows the, all the hairs on their head as well. You see him in the gospel, the Holy 12 people like beating up animals that are beast of burden. And he stops them and says, do not do this. Love, love your animals. Take care of them. Your job is to take care of them. And in the gospel of the Holy 12, we know that Jesus gets turned into Pontius Pilate for blasphemy, basically for saying that, you know, he's, he's the prophesied savior, but in the gospel of the Holy 12, there's another reason as well, because he broke the laws of Moses. So they were celebrating Passover before he was arrested and at Passover, you were supposed to sacrifice a lamb and then eat the lamb. And Jesus refused to do that. He said, do not do that. We will not be eating a lamb. And he said, I am the lamb. I am the sacrificial lamb, which makes that story make way more sense when you get the full context of, of the story of what happened. And so he broke the laws of Moses by not allowing that animal sacrifice to happen um, in the temples where he gets really mad. You know, he gets mad and he, you know, that story where he throws the tables over because they're doing business. It's not just business they're doing. They're selling animals for sacrifices. That pisses them off too. So we see a lot of these interesting tidbits of information that if you connect the dots, you can see why they wouldn't have wanted us to know that, right? The story of where he, you know, the Bible talks about they passed out fish and bread and multiplied it. That was an edit. In the gospel of the Holy 12, it's not fish and bread. It's bread and fruit. That was my question about fish. And you just, when I, yeah. you know, yeah. Wow. That was yeah, it makes sense. Why would you kill something that, that that's, that's got consciousness. Right. God, it, I believe animals, do that. I, I believe animals see God anyway. I, we have a dog here. Uh, Tom's met our little dog here and he, sometimes it freaks you out because they'll just start barking at a corner and there's nothing there. You know? <laughs> so, but I think they see God. I think they see spirit, the spiritual walk. I think, I think they still communicate. You know, we see pictures of Jesus holding animals and loving animals. There's a story in the gospel of the Holy 12 where he sees a kitten that's like on the brink of death and he takes the kitten and he nurses, Jesus nurses the kitten back to health to the point where the kitten's healthy enough and then he hands it to one of his disciples and the kitten like travels with them. It's now part of the group, you know? Um, so it's beautiful. It's a beautiful story. So why do you think that there's, or uh, we know there's a Q gospel. Why is it that, what we follow today 
whoever created it, why did they decide to name it Q? Well, we know there's Q clearance, right? We know in the military, Q clearance is like the top clearance. I think that's what we all thought. But when I stumbled mm -hmm. upon the book Q, and we know that Q has been saying it's all biblical and all this stuff's coming up. So Q basically was one of the hard copies of, of the stories of Jesus that people took from to write Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So it, it's the hard copy. Now, we don't have all of the book of Q. I actually have a copy of what we have on my in my bookshelf, but we don't have all of it. Uh, because they're trying to figure out what, again, we're working with what we got. The Vatican is not going to release that information to us, you guys. Now, I believe, and I think you guys probably agree with me. I don't want to put words in your mouth that the good guys are in control of the Vatican Library right now. I believe that. And I believe that they, we will have access to all these books, not just from the Bible. Apparently, there's big, huge books that were owned by the giants, by the Nephilim that they have. And you look at the, I've been to the Vatican, you see there's these gateways that are super big and these thrones, chairs that are really big. And it's like a human being would never need something that big. Why was it built that way? You know, what, what are they hiding? Um, we know if you if you look at the Vatican, there's a room underneath the Vatican that's called the Lucifer Room. I, I'm not going to go into whole detail of that. I'm not talking about the congregation. I believe the congregation, the everyday people like us who have been duped, their heart is their hearts are pure, right? They love God. So, so I'm not talking about your grandma who goes to the parish down the street. I'm talking about the people who know what they're doing and are creating evil. Um, a lot of seminary schools, even in the Protestant churches. Uh, if you follow the money, follow the money up to the top, they're owned by bad guys, basically. And so they're they, over these hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, they keep selling us this lie. Right. right. And I know I grew up in this in the South. We, you know, the southern southeastern part of the United States is mostly people of English descent. Uh, it's where they all settled. They were all Protestants. Um, so a lot of evangelical churches here, a lot of Baptists. I grew up Presbyterian. Um you will have this thing happen where people will be like, well, do you believe in Jesus? Well, are you sure you believe in Jesus? Are you really, really sure? And so this gaslighting starts to happen within you, within the church. And that's a, that's a tactics used with um, like CULTs or, or high control groups where you start questioning your own, your own thought process. Right. And so you see that kind of happening in evangelical churches. I'm sure, and Tom, I'm sure you have tons of stories from like the Mormon church where we know that they've been kind of infiltrated as well. Um, and so you know, Tamara says something that's awesome. Like we all have to start trusting our gut as well. So I would encourage everybody out there to read as many of these gospels that you can get your hands on, read them multiple times too, because you'll get a different feel every time. And then trust your gut, trust your gut, you know, pray about it. Trust your gut. That's the most important knowledge you're going to have is through your intuition. Not, you know, from the, it's kind of like when you're a little kid and, and you, your parents tell you not to do something and you say, why? And they say, because I told you so. That's basically what the church is telling us. Why can't we read these books? Because I told you so. That's not an answer. That's not a good answer. Show me the proof that these are not legit gospels. Show me that where's the proof that yeah. these are radical. But, but you know what? It, it, we should never be refused to look at anything because we're all on the same level as Jesus told us. We're all equal mm -hmm. and we should have complete transparency, right? Yeah. Complete yeah. transparency. So when they, w I, I don't, there is no excuse why there's a book that's hidden. As soon as I know there's a book that's hidden, it's in the, in the Vatican or the tombs. And there's the, we don't know what's happened with Jesus's life from mm -hmm. 13 to 30. That's enough for me to know that, that something's wrong here. And I have a question to ask, well, what other, what else is wrong with this book? You know, naturally right. that's what you would think. Well, what else is wrong with it? What else are they like? They're lying to us about. It's about, it's a bit like in a relationship, you know, yeah. your, your boyfriend or your girlfriend cheat cheats on you and you think, okay, well, I've, I've caught her this time or I've caught her lying that time. Well, how about the other times that I didn't catch her? Right. You know? Right. You start to second, that's, you start to second guess everything. And you don't need, I mean, that the, the idea that we have to have a Pope, I mean, we don't in the Protestant churches, but the, I mean, the, the Apostles' Creed that we say in the Presbyterian Church say that I, in it, it says, I believe in the Holy Catholic Church, which always confused me as a kid because weren't they like burning each other at the stake? Like, why would we say that now when our ancestors were basically threatened with their lives for being Protestant and had to come to a whole new world just to be able to express their faith? Why are we submitting to that? Why are we taking the knee? 
as we say now, to this organization. Yeah. Why? Jesus never said, never said in any of the canonized gospels or any of the, the heretical missing gospels that he is going to die on the cross for the salvation of the Pope. And then the Pope will then decide who is worthy to speak to God. He never said that. Never said that. He said he's doing it for Nick, for me, for Tom, for everyone equally, equally. Why is it that the average person will have stories of, of angels, of seeing angels, you know, of, of seeing these beautiful, if we weren't valuable enough to be on the same level as the perceived Pope, which we know, I mean, if we're all here on this channel, you, we know that Pope Francis is not, he's not, he's not, he's not the same faith as us. Let's just put it that way. Of course, um, of course so. he's not the same faith as us. And I think <laughs> the most important thing is that, is 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 we have a clean conscious and we are looking for the truth that is enough god knows yeah. we love you're serving the others truth. you're yeah. serving others you're being yeah. kind to other people um remember in the late 90s they had those bracelets what would jesus do you know those bracelets first of all jesus would not put anything over his face right nor, now nor would he take the um but he also would be very kind he's always he's always very very kind to everyone even to Pontius Pilate, you know, you see this in the Bible. You also see it in the gospel of the Holy 12 where Pontius Pilate was grief stricken. He did not want to, to execute Jesus. He knew that the rabbis were jealous. He knew, but he, he had to do it because of his place in government. And Jesus, Jesus tells him like, you're doing this because you've been, you've been ordained to do this by God. This has to happen to, to complete the prophecy. And he forgives Pontius Pilate. So even the man that was sentencing him to experience, remember guys, he was in a human body. He experienced the same type of pain, physical pain that we would experience in that situation. Mm -hmm. It's not like he didn't feel it because he was God. He was in a human body with a human nervous system. And the fact that he could stand there knowing what was about to happen to him and forgive the man who was going to orchestrate it ha happening. Like that's powerful. That's a powerful place of love and compassion. And that's where we should be. You know, if we're following Jesus, if we're following this faith, we should be that way as well. Stand up for yourself, mm, absolutely. Back again, but treat every human being with love and compassion the way Jesus did, especially the way he treated Pontius Pilate. Absolutely. So. Tom numbers, you've been quiet um, and I've seen you've been writing and looking down and up and down and up. Is there yeah. anything that you want to tell us numerology wise? Yeah, so there's some, some things came up. So you asked the question, um, why Q? Why, you know, why is it called Q? And I don't actually know the, the real answer to that. But um, there were some things that came up with that question that you asked, Bryce, um, Nick. So 17, obviously, is Q. Um, if you do 1 plus 7, that comes to 8. 8 is the eternal infinity number, the resurrection number, the wealth number, the Chinese wealth number. Obviously, two eights is Trump, 88 Trump. Um, but if you spell the word 17, it comes to uh, 109. And 109 comes to Diana Spencer, comes to Jack Kennedy. Um, it, uh, it comes to uh, Parliament as well, which is quite interesting. Um, comes to the, the day Saturday. Saturday is in Back to the Future. You know, next Saturday night, we're going back to the future. Um, and also, if you spell the word one, which is 34, that's DJT. It's also free. It's also dark. Um, and then seven is 65. Um, add those together, that comes to 99, which is Patriot, which is Rapture, which is Jupiter, which is Judgment, um, Ascension. Um so it's there's a lot of codes numerically within Y17. And even if you just think of it, you know, it's a circle, but then there's a, which is eternal, never ending, but then there's a line that kind of cuts it. So it's almost like kind of divide between perhaps this mortality, but also eternity as well. You know, you've got it, there's a, there's a distinct line, but there's also the eternal element to it as well. And there's probably a lot more reasons of Y, Q, but I don't know exactly why it is but there's some of the things that popped up um bryce spoke about the book of q so if you do the numbers on the book of q there is 33 which is don which is magic book is 43 which is uh wife she spoke about the you know the wives of jesus also todd 
Um, her partner is 43, uh, the word. Of is 21. Uh, that takes you to 97, which is Kennedy's, which is crypto, which is Thursday. But if you add the letter Q, which is 17, that takes you to 114. 114 is trump card. It's also Keystone. And Keystone is the is like the area or the village just below Mount Rushmore. And we've always been told about in the Q drops about Keystone. Um, and uh, also Bryce spoke about um, Christ being in Egypt for a period and also India. The word Egypt is 73, but the flip side of that, India is 37, which is also Bryce. Uh, but if you add 73 plus 37 together, it comes to 110, which comes to president, but it also comes to the Christ. So it's quite interesting how Christ was in Egypt, but also in India, uh, in some of the places that he was in. Um, but you add them together, it comes to 110, the Christ. Um, and Mary Magdalene, so we were talking, Bryce was talking about Mary Magdalene at the beginning. And Mary Magdalene, Mary is 57, which is England, which is Tesla. Uh, Magdalene is 62, which is Queen. Also Nicola, as in Nicola Tesla. So Mary Magdalene literally comes to 119, which is uh, Nicola Tesla. And it's also Redemption. Um, and... Uh, there's, uh, there was another one I did here. Whereas, oh, you also spoke about freedom. Uh, Bryce was talking about freedom. And freedom is 66, which is also woman. Um, and uh, she spoke as well about reincarnation. Um, and that's something that's come up for me during this whole kind of journey of 2020 and 2021. But the word reincarnation comes to 141, uh, which actually comes to looking glass as in the, the technology for, you know, future, uh, the past, etc. It also comes to Tom Bushnell, so I obviously like that one. But it also comes to I Am The Storm, and, and someone that I've got to know in the last few weeks is a, is a guy called um, uh, Michael Protzman, who goes by on Telegram. He's got a channel called Negative 48, and he taught me that one, and he knows a lot of numerology. Um, so I'd recommend people to have a look at him and his work. And also uh, Mickey, Mickey Clan, who we all know, she's got a lot of great stuff out right now as well. And interestingly enough, if you do uh, Michelle Clan, um, that comes to, Michelle comes to 67, which is reset. Clan comes to 52, which is earth, which is heart. But you add those together, that comes to 119, which is, is also uh, redemption, Mary Magdalene, Nikola Tesla. So it's interesting that how a lot of us in the community have, you know, really powerful numbers on the board as well. Um, and, um, uh, yeah, this is an interesting one. So you, you spoke about the 777 books that they say that there are in the Bible. So 777, people will know this, that President Trump was inaugurated on um, the 20th, of January 2017, and that is seven, seven, 70 years, seven months, and I think it's seven days or seven weeks since he was born in, in June, oh, wow. uh, June 14th, 1946. So there's a 777 there, and seven is you know the, the, the divine number. The word seven, as I mentioned earlier, is 65, but if you do three sets of 65, that takes you to 195. Um, president, well, Donald John Trump is 185, but if you do 195, that comes to redemption of currency, and it also comes to a physical landmark, and I did a little mini episode on this a few months ago, um, but Victoria Embankment, so right next to Parliament in London, Houses of Parliament, interestingly enough, Houses of Parliament comes to 217, which comes to... Uh, Bryce Elizabeth Watson, it comes to Tom Sidney Bushnell, but Houses of Parliament is 108, which is Twilight, um, and, which is, uh, yeah, Hoverboard as well from Back to the Future, um, Jack Edward Kidd as well. Um, but if you add Parliament, which is the 109 part, which is 17, comes to 217. Um, but the, the Victorian Bankman, 195 Redemption of Currency it comes to my one of my well, pretty much my favorite film director, who's a Q director, is uh, Christopher Nolan. His name comes to 195. But the interesting thing is, well, with that, in terms of the redemption of currency, um, 
is uh, you've got River Thames. So River Thames actually comes to 138, which is Donald Trump, and also comes to the word revaluation. But it's right there, the Victorian Bankman, the exchange of currencies right next to it. So all these things have been put in place for this great biblical millennial event or events that's going to start to take place pretty soon. So, um, yeah, but some interesting numbers, you know. When you look into the numerology, it's just uh, it's, it's faith-enhancing. It takes you from the 3D to the 5D. And, it, it, you know, if you want facts and figures and to get kind of down into the nitty-gritty, you can't argue with the numbers. You can get many interpretations of what the numbers mean. But when you add up the numbers, they're there for people to, to look at, you know. And if people want to take it on board, they can. If they don't, then that's up to them. But those things have been put in place a long, 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 long time ago. Um, and the other thing about 17 is the beginning of my number experience, really. I mean, I had one in 2015 with my cousin and with a bunker in Manhattan that I've spoken about. But at the early part of lockdown of March 2020, I knew, I knew it was all BS what we were being told. I knew for the three months prior. I knew it was, but I knew they were going to lock us in. I was like, this is going to happen. They're going to go through with this. So I had to figure things out like everybody else. And Boris actually said the key to the coronavirus puzzle is to stay indoors. Now, I thought, ah, oh, he's telling us something here. So the key to the puzzle, he's admitting it's a puzzle and it can be worked out. And you, if you stay indoors, you can, I guess you can watch television or you can go online and research. So I was always researching like the rest of you guys were. Um, but one of the first things I discovered, I think I'd seen this before in some other context years before, but something prompted me to look up the, um, the funeral service of Princess Diana. And if you look that up on Wikipedia, you can see it and probably other places as well. But it will tell you that her service, her funeral service, which took place in Westminster Abbey, remember the tale of the two cities, she was married in the city of London in St. Paul's Cathedral, but her funeral services in Westminster, which is just a couple of miles away. Um, interesting enough, Westminster Abbey comes to 200, which comes to Mount Rushmore, and it comes to like a thief in the night, that biblical term, how when Christ will come again. But the start time of her service was 9.08 in the morning, which is a strange time to start anything. Usually you start at 9 o'clock, maybe 9.15, maybe 9.20 at a real push, but not likely. But 9.08 is a strange start time. So I looked at that and I realized, ah, nine plus eight comes to 17. And I didn't know about Q then. I discovered Q later. Um, but I realized that that was a 17. And then something prompted me to look at, okay, 17th letter, that's Q. And then I realized that JFK's memorial is a big roundabout with a kind of a road going through it, which is a very clear Q. Diana's burial plot um, on the island is a, is a, is a circular Q with a, well, a circle with a squiggly path through it and even her memorial um, garden in Hyde Park uh, interesting enough Hyde Park comes to 88 which is Trump but there in um, Hyde Park and Kensington Gardens the water feature is a it's an ellipse with a with a line through it as well which is another cue so I was like okay and then I discovered the video with JFK Jr with Diana and how they met in Manhattan a year or so before she passed. But one of the places mentioned was Trump Tower. So I was like, ah, oh, there's three big characters on the board here. Donald Trump, JFK Jr. and Princess Diana. And then things went from there. And I was listening to President Trump every day. And I got the, the energetic, the numerical download from him. That's how it happened for me. No one sat me down and said, Tom, this is what numbers are. It just came from research and listening to President Trump. And also the key of 17 with, with uh, with Princess Diana and her her uh, burial start, well, her funeral start time. So and the numbers are beautiful, um, Bryce and Nick, and they're just they're a joy to behold. And um, if people want to learn more about it, I've got things on. You know, you can see the links. But also, I'd encourage people to pay, perhaps tune into the uh, the Negative Forty Eight channel and listen to to Michael. Uh, Mickey's on there a lot. I'm on there a lot, and others. Um, like Tiffany 777 and Sabrina go. There's a whole team that are really very good and very well versed in numbers. So if people want to upgrade their numerical understanding, I would suggest people go to that Telegram channel and join and listen. 
and uh, it's on very regularly, but it's very profound stuff. So, mm -hmm. well, Tom, thank you so so much. We are running out of time, but in Tom and Bryce, it's been absolutely wonderful having you both on. Um, is there anything that you'd both like to say to the viewers before we finish? Tom, you go first. Well, thanks, Nick. It's a pleasure to see you again, buddy, and to check in with you. And uh, yeah, just every I know I usually say this, but just just hold the line. We're getting close every day. We get closer to the finish line and um, be prepared, as President Trump has kind of alluded to. Janine has made reference to that. And just just by pure mathematics, we're getting closer to it every day. We don't know exactly when, um, but just gird up our loins, get ready. And it's coming and uh, it's going to be more amazing than we could possibly imagine. So hold the, hold the line, keep the faith, everybody. Thanks, Nick. Well, thank you, Tom. And over to you, Bryce. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on, Nick. And I'm going to tell you guys, again, on my channel, Esoteric Atlanta on YouTube, on Wednesdays, I post a new reading from one of these missing books. So if you go over to my YouTube channel and you look at the playlist from The Dark Outpost on Tuesdays from 1 to 3 p.m. on David Zublick's channel, which is not on YouTube, we read through it live and discuss it. But Wednesday, I do a recap. So you can see all the books that we've already read through and you can listen to the reading. I read it and we do commentary on it. And I've got some videos on Constantine and all that. If you like the history of that on my channel as well, I'd love to have you guys. I'm not an expert at this. We are all learning together <laughs> where we go. One, we, were, we go all, we're all just digging through this together. So thank you again, Nick and Tom. It's awesome seeing you guys. Hold the line. We'll, we'll get to see each other in, in person soon, hopefully. <laughs> Absolutely. Hopefully sometime in Marilago in the future, you know, we could maybe set that up. Well, guys, thank you so, so much. If you send me your links, I will gladly put them below in the description so that the viewers can go and have a stalk. <laughs> okay. All right. No, you Thanks, take Nick. care. I love Cheers, you. Bye. 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 Bye.